So here we are with another free tutorial here on YouTube. Um, I'm going to work with the lemons today and um, I'm using Prismacolor Premier Pencils and I'm using the Bristol Smooth. Now if you have a different uh, preferred paper or pencil, you can go ahead and use those. But for this tutorial, that's what I'm going to use for beginners and um, let's get started. I'm actually going to start out with, let's see, I'm going to start out with my white and that might seem a little strange, but we're going to work on this particular lemon and I'm going to come to the spot up here and we're going to just map out our white and sort of protect that um, from getting color. So very lightly I'm just going to add a little bit of white and I think I'm going to just bring it sideways a little bit. I just want to pre preserve that shine and then we can get started. So for this lemon get your, let's see, we're going to get canary yellow and I'm also going to get the sunburst yellow. Let's keep cream on hand and some yellow ochre as well. So let's start out with the, we'll start out with the canary yellow just because it's a bit brighter. And we're just going to do the small circles. and just work our way around where we have that shine in a very light layer. Now I have this marked out for where it starts to get dark, where it starts to round off. We're just going to work our way through and col color all of it using the small circles. And just keep an eye on where you're your values are and just you know where you want all the yellow to go. I'm just looking around on my picture here. Always look at your reference photo. Make sure you're not going on autopilot. I'm only going to bring I think this yellow down to about here and we're going to give it a little bit of a, a jagged edge. It might be hard to see. Yellow is a different kind of color to work with um, because of the way that it shows up on white. It can be super bright and hard to see. I actually contemplated put in, putting on sunglasses just to darken it a little bit so I could see where my lines were, but I don't think that that would work. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe it's something that I don't know about, but I don't think it would work. Okay, so I have that mapped out. Now let's get out our sunburst yellow. I am using the Prismacolor Set 72 as well on the Colored Pencil Picker app in case you are using it as well. And I'm going to start with this sunburst yellow we're going to do the small circles, but we're just going to add a little bit more deeper tone here. We can try to blend out this 
line here a little bit. And then keep looking for the different shades and the color changes as well. That can be a little harder to see. I'm just going to move along this line down here that we did. jump back to our canary yellow. Let's blend that out just a bit more. Make it a little brighter. Doing the small circles will also help with the texture of the lemon peel. the way that this is going. Okay, so again with the sunburst yellow, let's move along the top part here again. And I'm not going to add more pressure, but I am going to make my circles a little smaller so that it adds a bit more pigment in these areas and then get wider circles as I come down. Just kind of letting more of that brighter yellow shine through. Follow that outline too. You know, with this, these yellows, this is a really good blending exercise too. Yellow seems like it's such a touchy color. Um, I've never actually created lemons before, so this is a first for me to work with yellow. Um, but I know that a lot of people like to draw fruits and like to draw flowers, and you get a lot of yellows in both of those. And we're just going to add a little bit of this sunburst yellow throughout all that canary yellow that we have. Just gives it more of a nice feel. Let's go one more time over with the canary yellow and let's just blend out some of these areas a little bit further.
once you get that done, let's work a little more on that shine. I'm going to grab my cream and we're going to start going over top of the white that we had in there. Just very lightly. We're not looking to change the color. We want to keep that nice and bright. Got some color pickup there. Sometimes you get these weird color pickups. You see how those black dots got in there. Let's grab some of the sunburst yellow. Let's try to blend those a little bit. And then let's add in this area, we've got a lot of dimples. Um, so let's work on those too. So in these dimples, you need a sharp point and you're going to make some spots, just like polka dots. Just where those shines were. Do a little bit around here as well. And then let's take our yellow ochre and let's skip up here a little bit just to brown it up a little bit. The trick is really layering with colored pencils. Um, different colors and shades and it really helps when you have like a larger selection of colors to choose from. Um, you don't necessarily need them but you will get better looks if you have a few colors to, to pick from. So if you don't have a larger set it's not, I mean, it's not crazy like you don't need to go crazy and just buy like the biggest set of everything but you know I try to make make it happen with what I have so I'm going to go back through now with my yellow ochre and I'm going to darken those spots up just a little bit because I don't want them to be real bright like they are we use the sunburst yellow but now I'm going to go through with this to sort of dull them up a little bit. Okay, now we can work around them a little bit because when you have the dimples you have you have the lighter whites on the outsides of them. I'm just kind of poking around a little bit in between them. to give it that nice textured feel and do some small circles and we're going to come back and blend them with other colors and get your canary yellow again and we're going to very lightly go over top of these and leave a couple white spots here. See, that's what's hard about working with lighter colors is sometimes you pick up these random darker colors. I don't know where they come from. I mean, like flakes and stuff and then it just gets shoved into the paper and you have to be real careful about that. I have no idea where those came from, so it could have just come from sharpening and been on the side of the pencil or something and fallen whenever I was drawing, so just be careful. So 
So we're going to do small circles and kind of blend those a little bit. We don't want them to be super noticeable. We just want it to look like a shine with a little bit of texture. And then get your sunburst yellow. Let's darken it up just a touch. Now, when you do the texturing part, um, one of the things that I really like to do is I like to do the circle method, like how I'm doing the circles, but I like leaving space. I'm kind of like looping it, especially when there's texture. So when you do that, you create this effect like there's texture. So it's just a touch more pressure, and that's over top of all the light stuff. Rotate your pencil if you need a sharper tip. And it's already starting to look lemony. And then what you can do, even though this is a darker pencil, we can switch to the canary yellow and we can do the same technique, but lighter. And it still gives it that nice lemon texture of the peel. And I'm just letting some of that background that we just put down shine through and it gives it that almost like a white look or just lighter. Okay, we have a little bit further to go, and it almost looks smoother in here. It doesn't look quite as, I mean, you can still see some spots in there, and maybe we'll grab some gray or some sand to see what that does. sand go. <clears throat> okay, so I grabbed the sand. We're going to work on this just a little bit to see what it does. Yeah, I like that. So the sand, um, it's almost the same effect, just a little dull um, as the, uh, the yellow ochre. So the yellow ochre looks nice, but uh, I think the sand does a better job. It's a bit smoother in this area. So we're not gonna have too many circular I'm going to do the circle motions, but we're not going to let some of that white show through. We don't want it to be too, too holy, I guess. If you have a brush, use it. Yellow's finicky. Okay. So this is where it starts to get a little bit more, you can tell that it's, um, a bit more like speckled I guess. So I'm gonna start with my canary yellow and we're gonna continue our way down.
so it's strange in this area it um, the colored pencil picker up wants me to use a lime peel down here I don't see much green in there but we'll put a little bit in very lightly just for the shadow and then I'm going to go back in with my sunburst yellow darken it up a little bit a little bit more lime peel and then back to the sunburst yellow just blend it out and then let's work our way around here using your sunburst yellow add that nice shadow that's here getting there. Let's start adding this shadow over here. This part of the lemon's a lot darker over this way. Sometimes it can be really hard to pick out the shadows and figure out um, if they're actually darker. Because sometimes with yellow I guess it can be tricky because even though it's darker here it still looks yellow and yellow is such a bright color that it can be confusing. So I do have my black and white picture up here in the corner just to, to reference and I can see where all of the shading is and it's always helpful to have that especially with a lighter color like this. We'll add a little bit more here. And then I love how that looks right there. We might just add some sand in here. keep going over a couple more layers let's get our canary yellow again some of that sand trying to keep some of these little tiny like details here the circles and keep it looking like there's texture get our 
sunburst yellow. Let's work on this area. Let's bring down just a little bit of this value. And then we will need to add a value here. This is like that green, I don't know what you call it, it's like what's left of the flower, I think. I'm just going to add a few more bits of value around here. Keep looking at your picture and follow where you think you need value. I'm just going to keep adding a little bit here and there. Get some more sand in here. I really think sand is, is really making it look nice. I like the way the sand looks with the the lemon color here. Can add some up here. Tone that down a little bit. And then let's see. Let's do a little bit of cream in here. Kind of push it together a little bit. sand up here. Okay. Now I actually am going to switch to a gray. Let me see. I'm going to stick with some cool grays, I think. Might do French too. We'll see. got a cool gray 30. So what I want to do is in this area down here there's a lot of dimples that you can like just see the shadow of pretty much. So I'm going to use, I don't know if this is an actual um, method that someone has coined a phrase to, but I do like small circles, okay? And I also did this in the tutorial of the cat's eye. Um, I'm going to do small circles and just sort of let my pencil drop randomly to make these sort of divots and, and texture. So what I do is I just do these real tiny circles and just sort of move it around in different areas to create this dimple-like effect. Like I said, I don't know if anybody has coined a phrase of what that's even called, but it's just something that I automatically do. And it works well for me. And if you get too dark, you, you can always go back and try to blend it out or lift it up with um, some tape if you haven't pushed real hard so we're just keeping it real light and just work our way up here
Might have a few up this way. And we definitely have some over here. squirrely on that last one. Okay, let's take our sand then. Um, let's kind of go over top of them very lightly. We're just going to tone some of them down. Maybe re-fix some of this. <laughs> Got a little bit wild there. Let's add some more of the sunburst yellow just in those areas. I'm going to go back through. Let's do warm gray 20. Let's see what that does. So I want to just deepen up some of these um, values in here. I don't want to get too crazy with it. We don't, it doesn't need to be black. They're just um, a little darker we want it to stay looking yellow. So we will do that with our warm gray 20. a really nice touch to this um, just because it doesn't wash out the color yellow but it makes it like a nice blended value rather than just like straight black or brown <clears throat> and it seems that we have a bit of a shadow to just sort of following up the edge here of the top. Okay, let's add our little flower piece down here. I'm going to go with some chartreuse. Chartreuse is one of those colors. I don't hardly ever use this color. Okay, let's look at our shape. Super bright, greenish yellow. Okay. 
I am putting a little bit more pressure on this. And then we will use, let's see, let's use a little bit of some olive green just to get those nice values in there. See, there's a line like right here. And it comes around like this. And then get your chartreuse and blend some of those darker areas out. Some more olive green. Blend it back out with the chartreuse. Now I'll take your warm gray again, the warm gray 20, and we're going to work on some of these values that are underneath this. some inside. It's not going to matter much in there though. And there is a touch of black in that. So let's sharpen up our black. Make sure you have a nice sharp tip. Getting the creases a little bit. You have to be careful with lighter colors, especially with Prismacolor. Um, these will, the lighter colors, for some reason, just grab those dark colors. So um, sometimes it can be beneficial, but other times it can be like very upsetting if that's not what you are looking for so just be very gentle with that if you're using the light and the dark okay let's see what do I want I want this to be richer I'm trying to think of how to do that maybe I've got a lemon yellow and a golden rod. The lemon yellow looks very chartreuse to me, so I'm not thrilled about that, so I think I'll skip that one. And golden rod is like one of my favorite colors in the Prismacolor set. So I think I'm going to just add some of the golden rod in these areas where we have lots of visuals of the dimples and and then all these really nice dark places And it blends really well with that warm gray that we used to.
that looks a lot better. All right, let's see. Now we can start. Um, let's look at our shadow underneath. Um, let's start out with actually You know, I'm going to go with, let's do some French Gray 50, and we'll work our way out with some Warm Gray 30, and then in the shadow you can see there's a reflection of the yellow. So the yellow ochre is what we'll use, and I'm just not, I'm just going to ignore the colored pencil picker because I feel like these would be a better color match. For the reflection. So it's going to be really dark underneath here. It looks a bit more like black. So what we're going to do is come under and just very lightly we're going to add this shadow. We're not going to go the whole way down, so then go over top of it with your warm gray 20. We're just going to blend it a little bit. And then with the yellow ochre, we're just going to come along the edge here and give it just the reflection of yellow that it's asking for here. some cool gray 30 and now I'm just blending this out so that it's smoother so it's not as grainy get your black and now you want to be very particular in where you put this it's not all the way up here it starts about in here and curves around to about here so we don't want to put it all the way up we're just going to start a very thin line go along your lemon and up to about there and now I'm just going to add a thicker line And then get your warm gray 20 and let's blend those areas out. Okay. 
Let's add a little bit more of the French gray up here just so that it's a smoother transition. A little more yellow ochre around the bottom. And then blend again with the warm gray 20. Now, one thing that I want to fix is this area here with the lemon. It's too bright, so I'm just going to add the warm gray 20 right there. Maybe get my lime peel again. Just add a little bit more there. And then get your, just do some fix in here. French gray 50. You can even blend that just a touch. There. And I think that looks good. You might want to round up that black a little bit more. gray 20. We're just going to mush it around a little bit and blend it. Okay. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to kind of follow the same, the same technique as we did here with the rind on the second lemon. So get your Canary yellow, the sunshine yellow. And let's work on this. Now, this is a lot brighter than this area, so you want to make sure that the point in between here and here is much brighter in order to show that this has fallen behind this one. Okay, so this one is going to be a little bit different because of the cut that's here. This is the white, there's like a white rind part that's in here, and then this is like the yellow that bleeds sort of into the white part. So we have all these interesting little areas too. Like this is much darker. We're going to add some gray there too. <clears throat> But let's just add some of our color variation here with the small circles and making it a bit more textured. Do a little bit more of the canary yellow. And then just to separate this lemon a little bit more, come in with your warm gray 20. We're just going to follow that up a little bit more like that. And then let's add this down here. And we'll add a few of the gray circular motions in here. Okay. 
So let's look now. Let's take our white. Make sure there's no specks, any dark specks on it. If it is, wipe it off. We're just going to preserve these white areas. So these separations are white. And it's going to pull some of that color. Um, so I chose yellow because I knew it was going to pull some of this color uh, that I'm you know, using with the white, it's going to pull it. And I'm just going to go over all of those. And then we're going to bring the white up in here. This is that papery stuff. Now, if you used a different color and you didn't use yellow, we can go through I'll probably do that with you so just to show you how to use the taping method to pull up some of that pigment so that it doesn't bleed into your white okay so it's just regular uh, scotch tape and you just take off a little piece and then I have an embossing tool you can use you can use other things. You can use the tip of a pencil or you can use maybe the tip of a paintbrush. Um, I use this just because I know it's not going to, you know, damage my paper unless I push really hard. And you don't want to push hard on this. You just want to do it enough to pull up some of this pigment. Now I'm like talking about this line in here. So if you just lay it over and you just very lightly go over where the line is, it should pull a lot of that up. This is very helpful if you have, if you've made a mistake or um, you just need to pull some of the pigment up just to fix it. And see, it's not pulling a whole lot up, but it does help. And you don't want to gouge the paper either. You just want to gently make it touch that. And it is coming off, you can see. Um, and the reason why we use this is to we make sure that we're not uh, getting somewhere that we don't want to, like over in the other lemon. We don't want to pull up any of that pigment. So we just are very gently grabbing the other the pigment from where we want it to specifically get picked up. It's very helpful. This is a very useful trick. I think that's about done. Okay, so fold up a little bit of the pigment, and then I just fold up my tape and put it, you know, throw it away. Okay, so let's use our. It's going to be the same color. We got some lemon yellow. I'm going to put some, maybe some sand in there, maybe some eggshell. If you don't have eggshell, you can use cream. So let's take our, let's go darker a little bit first. We're just gonna go with our sunburst yellow and we're going to come alongside of this area. You wanna keep with some of that circular motion too heavy-handed here. Usually when I get close to the end, I start getting heavy-handed, so I know I'm kind of close, so I'm, don't rush it. And then take your canary yellow, and then we're going to just go over top of it, but also bleed it down into that white just a little bit.
Okay. And that looks nice. Um, let's take our white and lighten that up just a little bit in between. Kind of blend it down into, we want it to fade into the white. I'm not pushing hard, but I just want to make it go just a little bit further and blend just a little bit more. Let's try our sand, and I'm just going to come along the edge here, like this, blend it just a little bit, because so I want there to be a difference of where the cut is here and where the rind is. grab a little bit of our warm gray 20. I'm just going to do a little bit more separating on this one. See we don't want it to blend into that. We want it to look like this lemon is behind. So I'm just going to add a little bit more gray. Okay and then let's add a little bit more gray down on here. Okay. All right, we get to the fun part of all those little parts in there that have lots and lots of color and lots and lots of fun shapes. So we've got to deal with pulp in here. So and then a lot of shine and um, I mean it can be intimidating but don't let it scare you. Let's just base out with the canary yellow. And as you would with fur, you want to follow the way that these little pulps are going. So just make your way around. 